Welcome friends. So today we're going to talk about deadbolt walking and what that technique is and how and when we apply it. So here we have two doors. We have a door where on the locked side to open it you would twist the handle and push. So we have a push door, push to open. On the left we have a pull door or a door where we twist the handle and pull to open. The big difference here is with the pull door see the deadbolt latch right there. You can see that deadbolt. On this door, the deadbolt latch is hidden by this part of the door frame. So the, the door stop that the door hits when it closes protects visually and physically, protects you from seeing these latches. So we have different bypass attacks for the latches on different types of doors, whether it's a pull or a push. Okay, I have students in my classes that when I start getting into target assessment, I put them on the spot and I put this in front of them and I'll lock, sometimes I'll just lock the top, sometimes I'll just lock the bottom, sometimes I'll lock both, sometimes I'll lock neither, and I'll ask them, now that we know how to do some basic raking and picking, which keyway would you pick first? And based on the stimulus, some of them will say, um, some of them will get the right answer, which is you try the handle, and you double check and see if the door's unlocked. Then you try again even harder. Yes, that's the right first answer. Um, then if we have an unlocked bottom, they'll say, well, we, we pick this. And I'd say, well, we can access that dead latch in some scenarios, so I teach that. Or I'll have students where if the bottom is locked and the top is locked, I've had them say, well, I would use my bypass tool and I would slip that latch on the bottom first. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I go into my first line gear. I get my bypass tool. And if the deadbolt is activated and locked and the bottom knob is activated and locked, it would do me no good to slip that latch on the bottom because well, number one, we have to get that dead latch mechanism to slip. So I'm trying to shove the door shut even tighter. And that's proving to be a little difficult. Ah, okay, might have gotten it. So now, okay, I've slipped that bottom latch. Now what can I do with it? Absolutely nothing. So of course they learn that very quickly when they slip that, but we can tackle this deadbolt first. So let's break away and I'll show you why and how this can be exploited. Okay, so this is an unmounted, uninstalled deadbolt for the top lock in the door. If it's installed correctly, if the installation is correct, if it's the right orientation, up, down, if it's the right depth, left and right, and if the hole in the door frame that the, uh, that the deadbolt falls into, if that's deep enough, this is how this works. When you leave your house, you put your key in the keyway and you turn it, which turns this rod and these two angled levers here, they extend kind of like an elbow joint in your arm and it locks out. So now when I push this deadbolt in manually with my hand, it doesn't move. But if I put my key in or my thumb turn and I turn back just a little bit so that this notch is free, now, oh, almost, now I can push with my finger manually and I can open that deadbolt. These things are not always installed properly. Sometimes uh, if they're very weighty, like there's a lot of weight to them and they're kind of old and used, if this is installed upside down, sometimes the weight will hang open like that. So that even if you extend your deadbolt all the way, you can turn it, but then it kind of sags. And then if you can touch this deadbolt, you can push it manually with your hand. So there's a lot going on here. If I were to walk up to the store and if I had the right to make access and it was locked, the very first thing I would do would be to try this door handle. And I would say, yeah, that's pretty much locked. I'm going to have to access either this keyway or this latch, or as my backup, I can try the hinges. 
With the deadbolt, I'm going to have to access either this keyway or the deadbolt. And no matter what I do with this stuff down here, I still have to get that deadbolt done. Again, unless I'm doing a lot, unless I'm taking the hinges off. So with the deadbolt, here's my order of operations. First, if I can fit my tool into this gap here, I'm just going to try and get it to walk from the right to the left or from the door frame in towards the door. And I think that it's all the way extended, so this might not be good for your teeth. You might not like this sound. Yeah. So that's, that is correctly installed and it's fully extended. If I'm going to reach behind the door and I'm going to backtrack it just a little bit, right? So let's say for some reason this hole wasn't drilled deep enough so the dead latch didn't fully extend or for some reason you didn't turn your key far enough. Either way, now that that, that deadbolt, that locking system is, this is basically what I did. I just rocked it back a little bit from the other side of the door. So now that this is up and available to be exploited, we can now reach in with a knife and we can dig from the right and scoop to the left. That's our walking, little baby steps. Good, now the dead latch or the dead bolt has been taken care of. That's when and where this would apply. Now, if the bottom's unlocked, we just turn the knob and open. If the bottom is still locked, we can now make a smart latch entry. So we actually didn't have to pick either of them if the deadbolt is not fully extended. So fully extended, fully extended, I cannot push it in. If I rock it back just a little bit with the thumb turn, because sometimes, again, this is an installation problem. The installation of this door frame and the drilling out of this hole, this hole on the door frame isn't deep enough. So if there's like a plug in here, or if it's a really shallow drill, even if your key turns and you hear the deadbolt, even if it smacks into metal and it goes clunk, it has gone clunk, but if it was installed properly, the key would click all the way. Hoping, hoping that that makes sense. So that is when and why and how you would use this technique. Again, if that deadbolt is locked, is anything less than 100% locked out, you can usually use a pocket knife to walk that deadbolt, oh, nice shave job, to walk that deadbolt back into the unlocked position. Hopefully that helps. Be smart out there, have fun. And if you're able to, come check out some of our classes. This December is gonna be a really cool class out in Bihalia, Mississippi. So check out utac.io and we hope to see you there.